We are back. Part two. Actually, this is like round three. Technically, this is round three. This is round three for us. Yes, because, well, okay. This is my problem. I always get ahead of myself in these conversations. Shan Boudrum is back. Yee! Our sexologist and intimacy educator. You came on relationship. When was it? Months ago. Mm-hmm. And then I came Shortly on. Shortly after the launch, which I didn't realize that. Congratulations yes. on the huge success of Thank your you. podcast. Uh, I'm so excited. First of all, congratulations on the huge success. Success. Yes. Success of your podcast. Thank you. Thank congratulations <laughs> on the huge success of our podcast. Yes. Because our episode charted in the top 200 for two weeks. Shut up. Still there. Yeah. Shut up. Mm-hmm. The one of me coming on yours. Yes. <gasps> huge. A huge episode for me. It was such a good episode. So thank you. No, thank you. Are you kidding? You let me fucking get my shit off. Yeah. I need to. <laughs> I had some stuff to unleash. That's like when you invited me on today. I'm like, we're here to talk about you. Because yeah. now I'm fully me? plugged in. <laughs> to cami tube girl i want all the it's updates a scary, it's a scary place i don't know i don't know it's such a wild situation because i never saw myself being single again and then now being in the space and then talking about it so freely because we if you didn't listen to the episode with me on chance podcast i don't know what you're doing it's called breaking up is fun to do. Exactly. Which, Which is it all is. you need to know. And right. it's so true. Like, it's so true. I'm having so much fun that I wasn't expecting to have because when you first go through a breakup, you're like, oh, shit, my life is over. And then you start going out more and wearing less. And you're like, oh, this is actually <laughs> kind of fun. You did all the typical things, too. Didn't you, like, go to Dubai? <laughs> I went to, no, I went to Dubai with him. But I did go to Miami, which okay. they say, if your girl goes to Miami after a breakup, focus on yourself, King. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's done. It's through. And then I went to Cancun, and then I went to Rwanda, and then I went to Miami again, and I've been to a million different places. Um, and I've just been on, you know, my single girls world tour. And then where did you go for your uh, Sports Illustrated shoot? St. Croix. Yeah. You didn't even mention that. Yeah. In the list. Yeah. Well, it didn't that. Than that mm-hmm. i'm sports illustrated swim rookie i don't think i've said that on the podcast yet but i'm sports illustrated swimsuit rookie and if there's any better way to get revenge after a breakup it's to fucking be half naked in sports illustrated <laughs> <laughs> i think that's the best way what do you think as, a, as an no, educator you really did write the book on the literal best breakup ever mm-hmm. i mean not to, to, to discount the heartbreak you went through and how difficult it was yeah, and i know course. from my episode so many people related to that that yeah. dark place that you were in and you were so candid about sharing you know in many ways you felt <clears throat> like your life was over like yeah. big parts of you were over so but this is what we talked about with you is that it's not even just the healing process that you invested in because you invested in yourself you went back to your family Mm -hmm. you spent time with those who loved you you're in therapy all throughout that relationship you were investing in self-care so you set yourself up to be able to deal and heal and then find the joy yeah so it's not serendipitously that you just had a lucky great breakup you put the work in and it takes time Mm -hmm. like I think that's something that people don't realize is that it truly does take time to get over something like that because you have to unlearn we talked about this you have to unlearn and unfeel and unfantasize about the future and now you have to create a whole new future which is what I'm doing and it's so much fun (laughs) it's so much fun and so thank you for allowing me to come on lovers and friends to talk about my shit because now listen anytime that was one of my favorite episodes hands down even though your you know post breakup is not very relatable right (laughs) no definitely not definitely not but if you can get a ticket to miami i highly suggest it post breakup yeah (laughs) step one it's a very step one breakup step two go to miami immediately that's what you have to do that's the best way to get over something Knowing that, because when we talked, you know, you had been in a place in that relationship where for a while you were aware. You talked about women just kind of know, yeah. right? You, you know when something is not working. But you put it off for a very long time. Do you look back and say, I wish I did this sooner? Or are you like, you know what? Everything in its perfect time. Everything in its perfect time. Because had I done it any time sooner, I would have thought later with regret, did I make the right decision? Like I told you, I need to watch it burst into flames. I need to see the entire situation go up in flames disintegrate and I need to feel the particles and then I'm like okay it's time to go (laughs) now it's time okay this is great um gotta go like that's that's how I am so I needed to see it out fully and come to that conclusion on my own nobody could have told me shit at all even my family was like you know we just we saw the bumps in the road and we were just like 
curious, but we knew we couldn't tell you shit because you're a person who has to go through shit and figure it out on your own. I'm like, yeah, well, thanks for keeping your mouth shut um, because I definitely probably wouldn't have listened. Yes. I'm hard headed. I'm a Scorpio. Like, what can I do? I don't know. See, I love that you know yourself so thoroughly. I do. All right, one more personal question. Because last time we talked, you were like, dating is frightening to me. Yes. I don't know what to talk about. Yes. Which was so stupid to me because yes. you're a professional talker. <laughs> um, but then you're just like, I just don't even know how to put myself out there. Do you feel like you're overcoming those fears now? I think I am. But still, the idea of somebody asking me on a date freaks me out and like I don't know how to explain this to y'all but like just the idea of sitting across from someone new that like we both know that we want to have sex with each other hopefully and like getting to know each other I'm just like Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it it's just like gives me the ick it's just like weird because then like you're gonna do something and now I'm not gonna have sex with you anymore and then I never want to see you again and then I have to leave that's not a bad thing I know, but it's just weird. I don't know. And then you're like eating. Oh, you don't have to eat though. <laughs> um, there's this quiz that I love. It's called VKA, and so it basically identifies: Are you visual? Are you kinesthetic? Or are you audio? And then essentially, you should choose dates based on that. Mm. So if you're a visual person, put yourself in an environment where the best you comes out. Yeah. So go to a museum or go to on a hike, something that you can um, absorb the environment and reflect that back. And then if you're kinesthetic, do something physical. If you're mm. audio, maybe you go out to a bar together. So then putting yourself in positions where the best you is possible versus just choosing a dinner date if like that makes you really nervous. I like a bar situation, but then I'm like, okay, what if this guy gets plastered wasted? Isn't that a good red flag? Like yeah, if on like, date if he's number nervous? one. Or what if well, I get plastered wasted? If that's wasted? how he deals with his nerves, that's probably a good thing to figure out very early on. But what if I get drunk because I'm nervous, but that's not how I deal with my things and I'm just having a bad day. Well, then why are you getting drunk on this date? I don't know. I just think about all the hypotheticals you know when what? I end up staying I, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I had this, uh, I was talking about this. Like I went through a really big shift in my relationship last year because for a very long time, a fear-based mindset in relationships was very healthy for me. And mm. in life overall, because my life was unstable and I got married, but I got married with the idea that like, hey, if you're auditioning every day or else we're getting divorced. <gasps> And so that Jan. was just a part of my, I, it's kind of a part of my upbringing. My parents uh, threw around divorce a lot mm. and just be, is a normal part of, and I thought of it as a healthy thing actually, because it was a way to keep somebody on their toes to say, don't take advantage of me. Yeah. I also don't subscribe to loyalty or I didn't subscribe to loyalty because I was like, loyalty states that what was will be rather than mm. no, like if, if you were good to me before, but now things have shifted and I don't feel that from you anymore, I don't owe you just because you were here first. Mm. So I had all these principles that were really based on like, I can leave at any time. Don't yes. get too comfortable. Yeah. Ah, da, 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 da. I don't even know what my jumping point for this was, but <laughs> in general, I've recently moved out of that space now where I'm like, I'm not ever going to fully be devoted or loyal to you because if you do something erratic, I want to have the option to make a pivot. Mm. If you hit my mom with a crowbar, oh yeah, this is going to be over. It's a wrap. But then I'm like, what kind of hypotheticals I know. am I bringing up I and know. why? <laughs> like, That's me. In what universe is that going to happen and why yeah. do I feel the need in romantic relationships to you know, insert these hypotheticals mm -hmm. that I just wouldn't do to a friend. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, well, Cammie, I'm not going to hang out with you two days in a row because you could literally slash my tires <laughs> and I'm not comfortable. Like, like bitch, why would unhinged. Cammie do that? It's <laughs> why would I slash Cammie's tires? So it's, I think in romance, we tend to do that where we insert these hypotheticals yeah. that are just not applicable to who we are. And if we know somebody well enough to who that person is. And so I found that keeping up my guard and, you know, maintaining these fears that were not based in reality or any trends was just not helpful. Yeah. Ooh, so now so I'm loyal sense. to my husband. Yes, great. It was crazy because Jared does the sound design for my podcast. So he listened to it and I was waiting for him to come to me like in tears and hold me and be like, now we're fully like committed. Da, 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 da. And I was like, Jared, didn't you listen to my like decree to you that I'm committed and I'm here for you and I'm loyal to you and I'm never going to divorce you. Like I'm with you. He's like, and he was uh... like, bitch, that's a basic <laughs> of marriage. Am I supposed to give you a cookie for that? He's like, you're my <laughs> wife. So yeah, I would hope. I but I'm like, help. I've been mentally divorcing you for three years. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just finally signed the marriage certificate in my head. Every time. And said my he vows. He just pleases me. He makes oatmeal. There's not enough in the pot for me. In my mind, <gasps> I'm like, that's okay. I can divorce you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. fine. Don't worry. No, I get it because I'm I'm similar. I'm I'm 
based off of daddy issues and childhood trauma, always expecting that the person is going to leave at some point. And if I can have that in my mind that like this isn't going to work out, then I don't get disappointed because you're going to go anyway. But through therapy, she's come a long way. Because who the fuck wants to think like that? Like, who wants to think like the person that they're devoting their time to at any point could just be like, ah, never mind. Like, that's fucked up. Well, you should ask your therapist why you have a fear of becoming a raging alcoholic on I the know. first date. I if know. given the option. I'm going to talk to her about it tonight because yeah. we have a session. Thank God. Okay, good. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Wait, okay. In talking about breaking up, how do you feel about the notion that in order to get over someone, you have to get under someone else? I think that there's merit to that because we're pair bonding mammals. And so we're born to bond. We're born to make these connections. And so if you don't have that, there's a deficit feeling because your fight or flight can be activated because in theory, a pair bond is the safest bond. It's the most Mm -hmm. dangerous bond because as we know, people's spouses can be the most dangerous person to you. Mm -hmm. But in theory in the wild yeah this is the person who's going to throw themselves in front of the bear for you this is the person who is going to sacrifice for you and your family and so if you don't have that relationship you can feel on edge especially if you're accustomed to being in them so it can be a coping mechanism uh, a way of alleviating stress levels if you now have a new one Mm -hmm. so i i can understand that i used to really feel that way before too where when I didn't manage that stress ac- accordingly or kind of understand why I felt so drawn to be with somebody at all times, yeah. it was helpful. Like, it's an, an addiction I like to transfer from one person to the next. Mm. It's like energy, it's never it's created, it's just transferred, yeah. it's never destroyed. So I'm like, that's how I felt about liking people. Yeah. I needed to pass it on to somebody new. I think through self-work and understanding and acknowledgement of what that drive is, when you feel that panic of like, I'm alone, I don't have anybody, you can be reasonable and like, there's no bears. Yeah. No one's going to eat you. Yeah. You don't need protection. You don't need a partner. You're okay. And if you crave intimacy, here are other healthy options you have available to you, mm. your family, your friends, etc. So yeah, there's merit to it, but hopefully you can work yourself out of those irrational fears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I think for, you know, when we, we broke up in November, in the top of November, but like I said, it was already dwindling out two years prior to that. But like at the top of this year, I just, I didn't feel like I missed the relationship. I just missed cuddling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I just want to cuddle with somebody. Like I doesn't, person is interchangeable. Like if I, if I like you or if I think you're cool, I just want somebody to hold me for a little bit. And then the feeling would subside. I'd be like, I don't want anybody touching me. I don't want anybody in my space. And then it comes back like, oh. But why not? You know, actually, I had this, uh, I talked about this with Jared in a video because we started out as fuck buddies. And what made that a successful fuck buddy relationship is it was so compartmentalized. We literally mm. were not friends. I don't say friends of benefits. We didn't have any other attachments. Um, and I was at a place in my life where I was not looking for something more emotional or intimate but because we were just fuck buddies and Jared's never really been physically affectionate and because there was no intimacy he had no inspiration to be so we would just have great sex and then it would end and then I kind of got to a place where I realized I was missing the cuddling Mm -hmm. but I also acknowledge that cuddling after sex releases more oxytocin which is the bonding hormone so you're actually putting yourself at risk of getting attached to your fuck buddy Mm. if you do stay and cuddle so I actually got a cuddle buddy so I would literally (gasps) have sex with Jared and then I would drive to my cuddle buddy Shut house up. and sleep over there. And we would have breakfast in the morning. I never had sex with this guy. Um, that wasn't what our bond was. But oh. yeah, I just had somebody I slept over with and I cuddled with. Where do you find this? Do they got that on Amazon? You know, I, <laughs> I don't even know. I kind of just got into that routine where, you know, it became very clear that we got along. And then, you know, he had made attempts to further the intimacy. And I was like really clear it wasn't going to happen. And we had great makeout chemistry. Like we had really good kissing <gasps> Ooh, chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we liked to do that together. But yeah. I Did think, he know that you were coming from? Oh, no. I didn't say that. That'd okay, be terrible. Yeah. I mean, if no. he would have asked. I mean, obviously, I wasn't putting his health at risk. Yes, I wasn't yes. going and, you know. Yeah. Rubbing my bodily fluids on yeah. him. <laughs> like, hey, by the way, I'm fresh off a of fuck, but can we cuddle and have right. some, and some maybe scrambled eggs? Shower in between, but yeah, I definitely, yeah, I think you can find a cuddle buddy. Okay. There's also cuddle parties. Which, no, absolutely not. Uh, okay. Immediately no. Okay, sorry. Immediately no. <laughs> okay. Cuddle party? Yeah. What the hell does that mean? They have them in Venice. I've been to a couple. Literally. What do you do at a cuddle party? That's it. You have an instructor. 
who gives the various ways that people can cuddle and then you know issues clear boundaries there's cuddle free zones you can go to if you get uncomfortable at any time and then you have an hour where you just cuddle with different people who are these people do you get their names you can get their names yeah but you don't pick them in advance they're just people what if they come up to you and you're like ew i don't want to cuddle with you then you can do there's other activities so there's a way of um so you can do back to back you can do hand games like uh thumb war so you can do other intimate games if they like say if they approach <gasps> you you can suggest another form of like connecting but i didn't find there's anyone i didn't want to like give a hug to um i think i could find one or two that i didn't want okay <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't want to i dragged That's jared with me to though. this event and uh he spent the whole time in the no cuddle zone yeah because he was like i don't want to smell anyone's breath or skin no how do you know that they like and then what if somebody like gets hard on your back when you're like the little spoon what are you supposed to do then i don't i don't think i think if people felt arousal then they would go to the cuddle free zone <laughs> You know, that that's cool. Like, I need a break. Space. Yeah. I need a break. I'm going to go to the That's to be said, me. if you want a cuddle partner, uh-huh. and I think that women have to get over this idea that if we don't give X a relationship, sex, then we're going to be a disappointment to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, getting to cuddle with Cami Crawford, getting your time, mm-hmm. your wisdom, mm-hmm. your humor, my energy, your energy, like that's the trade off, right. right? Like that is the value. That's the bonus. And so depriving somebody of that opportunity altogether is actually the cruel thing. Mm. Because I, I know, I think that it's just like a, I don't know, misconception that women are the only ones that want to cuddle afterwards, but sometimes the guys want to cuddle afterwards. I think everybody likes cuddling. Everyone likes to cuddle. Not even afterwards, just at the end of a day. Yeah. People like that and especially if you know you have some attraction my cuddle buddy i was very physically attracted to him i just mm. knew we had no sexual chemistry um and i already had jared so i was just like um, that, that that slot's already filled that yeah. position is filled at the time um but i did find him physically attractive i liked the smell of his skin and breath um oh so it was and i think i'm still kind of friends with him to this day yeah yeah so you don't recommend if you're in a fuck buddy situation that's strictly for that purpose to be cuddling i don't recommend that Unless you, again, like anything else in the world, um, like food, right? Mm -hmm. There's a a reason people have to go on strict diets because they know if you buy certain foods available in the home, those drives are going to take over and you're going to find yourself eating the foods that are not good for you. So if you have a lot of discipline, then, yeah, you can buy the candies and the cakes and have that in eyesight at all times and not choose them. Most people can't do that. So. I knew myself, I knew my boundaries, I knew where my ego would come into play. So I had to create a system that allowed me to be successful in the relationships that I had agreed to. Yeah. So what do you do afterwards? What did we do afterwards? It was pretty much, he used to like his, like Jared's form of cuddling is he would always hook his arm underneath my legs. Oh my God, they love that. For like a few minutes, like (laughs) he just hook his arm underneath my legs, like by sitting beside me. You're then, mine. <laughs> but you know what also helps too is like you get up to go wash off. Yeah. So he was always really good at, at post-sex rituals. Uh, mm-hmm. He goes and he rinses. I would go and I would pee. Mm-hmm. And then it's we've already broken the intimacy. Right? Yeah. And now it's very easy to like, well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was smoke cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> you just don't go and lay back down. You just stand up and you do something different. Yeah. Oh, well. You heard it here first, folks, because some people, the girls are going to be mad about that one. You think and so? the boys. Everyone's going to be mad about that because everyone wants to, like, hang out. And, like, I have had friends that I'm like, bitch, you have to get up to pee. Like, you can't you just stay in the bed and cuddle this man until the next morning. You're going to get a UTI. Mm-hmm. So get up. <laughs> yes. Pee it all out to the very last drop. I don't <laughs> care how hard you got to push. All right? Get up. Okay. So, of course, people wrote in because it's you and... People want to talk to you and they want to talk to you about sex. But you know what we found interesting? Because we talked about this the last time you came on. The taboo nature that sex still has in 2022 is crazy. Like, I I get it. But then at the same time, it's like we all do it. And like, can we acknowledge how weird sex is? Like, sex is great, but sex can be weird. Yes, I think it is strange. Yeah. Like, it's a weird thing. Like, if you were to, like, I mean, yeah, watching sex back sometimes is fun. But, like, if you were to really think back at the way that we have to move and the positions we have to get in and the noises and the sounds and the looks and things that happen, it's weird. Like, it's not always going to look like a porn film. Like, sometimes it's fucking weird and you're fumbling and in the dark. It's going to look kind of weird, too. 
it's all weird. Yes. So like if we acknowledge that part of it and everyone doesn't think that they have to be some raging sexual nympho, like that I think we could talk about it more freely. But we got less DMs and more of these kinds of responses that we did like a question kind of situation about what's your number one sex question. So a ton of people wrote in for that, but less people are likely, I think, to write like an intimate little story. See, I would prefer those versus my DMs, which are like, when I was seven years old. (laughs) (laughs) This is what happened. I started masturbating at the age of 12. Okay, let's see. Should we go with the rapid fire? Let's go with the rapid fire first. Okay. How do you politely ask a guy to get an STD test before you have sex? You make the conversation uh, in line with what good sex is. So good sex is interesting. It's fun. It's reciprocal. Mm -hmm. um, It's imaginative. And it can be a little quirky. Like you said, it can be a little awkward and weird. But I think when people talk about sex, they make it very separate. Mm. It's like talking about sex is serious. Yeah. It's deliberate. Yeah. It's dry. You will get pregnant. It's and impersonal. Die. Right. And then all of a sudden you wonder why it's an unapproachable conversation. Yeah. So if you came to somebody and you said like, oh my God, when I have sex, I just like to be free. I mm-hmm. like to be spontaneous. I like to be free. I want to try anything. I want to lick anything. I want to touch anything. And in order for me to get to that space mentally of freedom, I make sure that my sexual health is really in line. And mm-hmm. so I get checked very frequently to ensure that when I'm with a partner, they know that my body can be their wonderland. And I want to feel the same vice versa. So, you know, what are your feelings on sexual health? When's the last time you've been checked? Mm. That's a very nice fantasy romanticized way of asking because i would just be like what's going on down there when you when's the last time you got tested because i don't know where your dick's been yeah and that person could be or they could be like yesterday <laughs> uh, five minutes ago or you know people can get defensive for that right. question like why are you asking so yeah if you have a partner that you have that kind of relationship of course the fastest route to anything is a straight line mm-hmm. so if you have that kind of rapport with somebody and there's apps called like the safe app for example where people have to preload. Grinder is an incredible dating app where mm-hmm. you actually put your sexual health status, especially because in the LGBTQ plus community with gay men specifically, you know, HIV is so prevalent. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it, it's built into certain places where you could have a straight, more to the point conversation. Yeah. So if you can do that and you know the person's not going to lie yeah. because they're put under pressure, then you should otherwise to make it a little curvy. Yeah. Okay. What happens if I fart by accident? And how can I prevent it? It's okay to embrace the fact that it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think if you make that a part of your sexual script, then it's uh, it's part of the intimacy. I had this girl, Hannah Burner, on, and she was just saying, um, because she's a comedian and her husband's a comedian, and they were talking about comedy in their relationship. And she's like, yeah, like a lot of people think you want to date a funny person because it's someone to laugh at. Like real intimacy happens when you can laugh together. Mm -hmm. And so it's in those moments where something kind of silly happens. And if you can kind of share a moment or a (laughs) laugh, I think it can make the sex better. Yeah. Well, because let's be honest, we all think about not farting during sex. Oh, for sure. We all think about, please don't fart, please don't (laughs) fart, please don't fart. And if it comes out, what are you going to do? I always say that for (laughs) especially people with vulvas who are getting oral sex, like that position. Yeah. What? Yes. Of course I want to (laughs) fart. The whole time. I'm just clenching my butthole together. And I was like, like, can it be silent? (laughs) Will it be smelly? How? What did I eat today? Hmm. Taco Bell. Probably. Probably not. Going to save this one for later. And if I move, does he think I'm finished? I don't want that to happen. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Because I still want him to keep going. But then if I fart, then is he having a good time? He might. Some people like farts. Some people do like farts. I don't know what the name is. There's all there's all these interesting names for you know different sexual fetishes like mm-hmm. coprophilia. Are people who like to be pooed on? Uh uh-uh. uh Um. Immediately no for which, me. Right, but I mean like <laughs> there's me. probably a very great somebody in your who's listening right now. What is the name of the fetish for people who like flatulence during sex? Flatulence. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say we can make something up. <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. Can a woman have sex while pregnant? Yes, absolutely. All throughout, unless your doctor says otherwise. Um, My first pregnancy, I had a period of time where I had spotting and my doctor said, no, refrain from sex and physical activity of any kind for like four weeks. Mm -hmm. But they say that pregnant women actually enjoy it even more. And then when you get towards the end of your pregnancy, it's an even better time because then you can try to induce the birth. Yes, look at you knowing. Great job. I know a few things. Hey, uh, I know a few things. But then there are also women who are like, I, my husband or boyfriend or partner or whatever, like I didn't want them anywhere near me. 
the entire time I was pregnant. Like, don't even think about anything. No oral sex, nothing, because it's going to make me throw up. Like, everybody's different. So you shouldn't feel weird if you're not into or if you're more into something. And then there are a lot of partners, especially a lot of guys, who are not into having sex while the woman's pregnant because they're like, I don't want to poke my baby in the eye. It's like, sir, don't give yourself too much credit. Right, exactly. (laughs) The baby is well protected and fine. (laughs) Please. Okay. In a long, committed relationship, is sex still meaningful to my partner? Wow, that's a fast... I've never heard that question before, ever. Yes. Hmm. That needs more. It should be. It should be. It might not be if they're asexual. Um, But yeah, of of course it should be. I think it becomes more meaningful. Mm -hmm. I know for myself, like, the less time and opportunities we have to have sex, the more that when it does happen, it really makes a difference for us. The other day, um, my husband thanked me after sex. Which I didn't know if that was an R or like, I've been fucking oh. up. Like, he's like, thank you for doing that. <laughs> thank you so much for this. You have no idea how much it means to me. <laughs> You're like, damn, sorry. Well, great. Next time, be more appreciative. <laughs> oh, my God. What did you say? I was like, that was weird. <laughs> I think I just literally said that. I was like, oh, you're welcome, but that's weird. Maybe you just put it on him like extra good and he was just like, oh, yeah, wow, thank <laughs> you, God, for this well, moment. Well, it's more so I just, I've been unwell. Um, so I think that he looked at it like, I mm. know that you're not having like the best bodily time and you made an effort for me. Yeah. So I'm like, I had a good time too. Yeah. yeah. I think that also in long term relationships, like the monotony of sex can become a thing where it's like, eh. Because, like, I've been there where it's like, should we have sex? No? Yeah, no. Let's just fucking watch Netflix. And then yeah. and then later it's like, but should we? I guess we could. <laughs> like, who wants it? You don't want it to be like that. But sometimes it is like that. Yeah. So, you know, but then there are also times when it can be really, really exciting. I think vacation sex is the best. Because you're out of your, like, normal routine, especially if you live together. Like, you're somewhere different and there's new sheets that you don't have to change. And, like, that's exciting to me. It is exciting. Yeah. Just like clean and you can get room service and like just enjoy your life. So I get it though. It's it's hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get this money for the rent. Um, okay. Is it okay that during my how to love myself journey, my sex life is lacking? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that especially it's not even a matter of sex is not a part of my how to love me schema. It's just maybe while you're prioritizing practicing learning these new things you just don't have space Mm -hmm. it's like you know when you're trying to get really good at cooking Mm -hmm. maybe you're not as good at cleaning during that time but then once you become in flow of that thing and it becomes second nature to you you have more space and more mental capacity to open up to other activities so yeah i think this is the thing with sex in general i always say to people is that it's like the really the one area in life that i can think of that you really should only do it because you want to. Mm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, there's health benefits, but there's other things that you can do to get the health benefits that sex gives you, right? Like, the, um, it, it boosts your immune system, and then it helps with heart health, and it helps the cardiovascular, and then it also helps you with your skin. It releases DHEA, so it makes your skin more glowy. But there's, like, if you wanted each of those benefits, you could find something else. But uh, in general, and we definitely don't need you to have sex to procreate, you know, and populate the planet mm-hmm. we're good especially in la we yeah. we all good we're over good. here we good it's bad for the environment right so in general Let's keep it sustainable keep know, sex sustainable and then duty sex doesn't benefit your partner really yeah. you know it's not good sex for them and it's definitely not healthy for you so this is the only activity in life that you should only do it because you recognize the benefits and so you're going to put yourself in a position to enjoy the benefits even if the process doesn't always feel enticing to you mm-hmm. like working out mm-hmm. i don't always want to work out but i once i do and i'm like i'm glad i did yeah. that so sometimes sex can be that for people yeah um but you should only do it because yeah because you want to do it and so if you just don't right now i think that's actually perfectly in line with self-love mm-hmm. i think that some people especially if you're in a relationship a lot of people feel guilt about not giving their partner mm-hmm. sex and especially if you're in a place like i've i've been there before too where i'm mentally not in a place to want anything like that like really all i want is cuddles or that even if that so what do you say to people who are like my partner is asking me i don't know what to do i'm not in a place what do i do so i have a podcast episode with rachel Lindsay, and Mm -hmm. it's called boss in the streets and currently meh in the sheets yes 
And basically, there was two times on my podcast I fully expected the person to call me and say, we're not putting that out. Yeah. You. What? And Rachel. What? Because Rachel was like, I'm putting out a book. Yeah. I'm like doing a lot of shit. I'm like too tired to have sex with my husband. Yeah. And she's like, and I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. I'm okay. She's like, there was a time in our relationship that I bought all the toys and I got all the things. And I, you know, and they met on The Bachelor. So she, we had the fantasy suite. Mm-hmm. And we had all this adventurous sex. And she's like, now I just don't want to. I love my husband and I'm so like appreciative for him. And I love our relationship, but I just don't want to have sex. So yeah. that's episode because there's something called HSDD, which is hypoactive sexual desire disorder, which is a sexual dysfunction for people who are frustrated by their Mm. lack of desire for sex Mm. like they're like i don't i want to i just don't have the drive but then there's also a sect of the population who doesn't want to have sex who's not frustrated yeah they're like this is just like a joyful part of my existence right now or a detail of what i think works best for me yeah and that's okay if you communicate that with your partner right i think during the pandemic was when i felt the least sexual that i've ever felt in my entire life and i went to my OBGYN because i was like i need to switch my birth control like something is wrong with me like this is not me this is not my norm like something's something's wrong and my OBGYN was like you know it's like a pandemic right like it's okay if you're not bouncing off the walls and i'm like is it were like, you frustrated or did you feel guilty i was frustrated but also my relationship was dwindling out so there was more than one factor than just you know me and my birth control like my birth control spoiler alert, didn't have nothing to do with it still on the same birth control i'm ready to bounce off the walls <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm fine i'm fine but like it's also there's so many mental things that go down and you don't realize how much everything every single factor plays into like your sexual energy and it's okay if you're not feeling like fucking yes it's fine nothing's it can wrong be, with you it's those conversations that can be so illuminating i had um reoccurring bacteria vaginosis and yeast infections and UTIs in my last relationship. And Mm. it was like literally back to back. And it was so aggravating because also too, you don't give your chance, your body a chance to reset Yeah, because you're always putting medication in or trying to make adjustments. And I was just doing a lot. So I couldn't find my balance. And so I spoke to a doctor, not my doctor, but a doctor. And I was like, I've tried literally everything. It's probably been like a year and a half, two years. Like why? And she was like, maybe energetically your body just doesn't like that semen and doesn't like the person who's dispensing the semen. I'm not going to lie to you. That's the first thing I thought. Yeah. It was a spiritual response. (laughs) You know what I mean? Exactly that, right? So to your point, like sometimes it's not a physiological thing. and Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not a you thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think if you give yourself the space to really answer those questions rather than rushing to a solution because you're just trying to fix it, you can really find what the actual solution is. Mm. Ooh. That's a good one. Okay. Somebody says, what the hell does it feel like with a penis? Oh, yeah. It feels you good to me. <laughs> feels good to me. <laughs> I guess if you're mainly, if you aren't having sex at all, or if you're having sex with the same sex, which I'm assuming is female, then you wouldn't know what it's like with like a real girthy. Mm-hmm penis with blood flow going towards it i don't know how to explain it you did pretty good (laughs) it's like that's how it feels how can i increase my libido what tips are there to mentally switch off and be in the moment first and foremost i would say there's this thing i have called turn on triggers which is important just to note in that when we first get together with somebody we're on the roller coaster of sex drive like your body wants to make that pair bond and your body Mm -hmm. wants to get from passionate to companionate because that's when true intimacy and connection and that's when I can be like, you're gonna just fucking save me from the bear. Yeah, I know that, you know, we're at the place now where we actually have shared intimacy. So your body really wants to get there with that person because that's where the, the true benefits of coupling come. And in order to incentivize you to get there, it's doing all the work for you. Mm-hmm. So it's like dopamine yeah. and cortisol and adrenaline yes. and butterflies. And like, so I don't have to try to be turned on by you. Like your presence, activates my risk and reward center and I'm just excited around you. But then when you shift to companion it, which has its benefits because now you've got security and you've got trust. And so, and it's not as scary. Like, are they going to call me? Do they like Mm -hmm. me? So you get past that phase, but then your brain also says, oh, we don't need to like incentivize you anymore. You're already hooked on this person. Yeah. Yeah. So now this roller coaster turns into like a go-kart and you guys have to literally 
push that shit together yeah. um, and take turns pushing it. So you have to then get more manual and conscious about like what turns me on versus does why doesn't my partner turn me on? So mm. turn on triggers is a way of addressing that. Some people require a conversation. You know, they're sapiosexual people. Some people require the environment to be taken care of. Some people require a favor to be done because sex itself is not incentivizing enough. Some people, myself, I'm desire. What really gets me going is my partner saying really direct things like not I want to have sex, but like your tits look incredible right now. I cannot. You know what I mean? Like, so you're like, oh, do. right. That gets me going. <laughs> but that's not what gets him going. Uh. What gets him going is environment. So mm. we went to New York. And we were in this like high rise. And so it was like, let's open all the windows yes. and like, we're going to have adventurous sex. Yes. He's so environmental and mental that the fact that the windows were open, it was awful sex <gasps> because what? he couldn't get into it. Oh, that would make me even more excited. It, well, then let's have sex because we're compatible <laughs> Great, in that way. Finally. But he's very I much like, I like my environment to be controlled. I want to feel safe. And I just, I want all the variables like known to me. Mm. So I'm the kind of person, if you said like, oh my God, like your ass looks amazing. We yeah. could have sex on dirty clothes. Yeah. He can't do that. So uh, being aware of those differences is important because sometimes we try to approach someone like love languages, yeah. how we want to be loved, and that person's not receiving it because they have a different channel and wavelength. That could be one. Then you talk to your doctor because maybe there are supplements, maybe there is medication, um, and then have an honest conversation with your partner about it. Let them know. I think it's a really big one, too, is that you want to let the people that you know in on the fact that you are actively working towards a solution and that they shouldn't take it personal because that actually can make the problem even worse. Mm, that's so true. Last one. This is a good one. How do I tell my partner that I want oral? Oh, you answer this one. I feel like this is... How am I supposed to answer it? Well, because you're actively in the scene right now. You're the so sex expert. I, <laughs> I can't even... It's hard to ask for what you want, though. Yeah. What if... If I have to ask... You're just chilling on the couch and you want some head and you're like, I want some head. If you're in that place and you're, I could, I could ask my partner that because mm -hmm. we're in that place in our, our relationship. I um, went through that time um, when I had, you know, Jared and I had a cuddle buddy. I, I was receiving oral from different people too. And I never really had to like explicitly ask. Instead, I would just make out with that person and maybe guide them. Maybe mm -hmm. I'd wiggle my body a little bit, but um, I'd also be very communicative of like, this is how I get off at some point, you know, mm. that, that like clitoral stimulation and, Maybe I would start by using my own fingers mm, mm -hmm. and then see if that person wanted to add yeah. a body part, mainly and then a tongue. What if they don't? <laughs> yeah, because I think <laughs> then that leave. it's, it's kind of tricky because I'm trying to think about the reverse. Like, how does a man ask for oral sex? I hate when they ask. I hate it when they ask. I would just rather do. Don't ask me. Because then now it's not fun anymore for me. I don't mind if I ask and then you say. Like, I love that. If I like, mm. say to Jared, I'm like, what do you want me to do? Like, yes. Suck this dick. That's like, fine. Yes. That works. I will do that. So. But when they're like, can I think I could get the man? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because there's nothing sexy about when they ask. Yeah. So, I mean, so it kind of just should be in the flow of things. And then if that person is not picking up on it, maybe like a separate conversation around what brings you to climax or what's pleasurable for you and like, suggesting activities mm -hmm. that can help get you there mm -hmm. here's an activity get down get down on your knees your audience really you know, this is a couple Pray of questions i found were very stumpagey that was a very stumpy question really yeah that was a stumper <gasps> we're stumping sham you really are and that you know is sex meaningful in a long-term relationship is very fascinating yeah so i'll be thinking about this for a while thank oh, you great well then you have to come back thank you cammy what are they called the cammy the camathons the camathons what is what's your what's your squad called oh what are they besties. oh yeah our besties, besties. i'm like who are y'all <laughs> <laughs> who are y'all who are you to me <laughs> what are the lovers and friends called the lovers i get calm lovers and friends oh like, yeah hey lovers and friends of course because you know maybe you're not comfortable being my lover right true but you might want to be my friend you might or yeah. my cuddle buddy right <laughs> exactly not at a cuddle party though <laughs> you have to pay for that yes you buy a ticket mm -hmm. so you everybody got on like a wristband no it's not like a club <laughs> <laughs> you pay online so everybody knows in advance and then someone checks you off at the door to make sure that you're part of the attendance list and not and like you sign a consent form in, in advance <sighs> and stuff so and everyone's clothed Everybody is clothed. Everyone's wearing like workout clothes, like yoga clothes. Oh, interesting. So it's an undertaking. So Right. You might have to look into this. And it this. might get sweaty. 
Ooh. So that's why you need to make sure. Oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> I lost you. Never mind. Lost me. Lost me at the sweat. Sorry. <laughs> Ugh. Thank you so much, Shan. Can you remind everyone where to find you? Lovers and Friends, my podcast. It's my greatest joy. And maybe on relationship for round five, four. 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 Oh, you're coming back. Okay. Good. You don't have a choice. All right. I wish this could be just like a three hour long episode because there's so many things we could talk about. Many things. <laughs> many, many things. We'll offline. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cami Crawford, host of the Relationship Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more videos, click below to subscribe and like this video for more Dear Media content. So shut up and listen.